Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're going to be talking about 4-3 of the Castle Black Falcon Mega Dungeon. First, let's begin with a recap of the story, or maybe the first time, I actually don't remember if I've talked about it before. <laughs> Castle Black Falcon was awarded to Jasper McLeod, the Ripper of Red Mountain, a war hero who held his own against a horde of orcs in the crags of Red Mountain. This experience left him scarred and paranoid, and through the years his letters to the outside became more erratic, crude, and mean-spirited until only official channels ever contacted him. You see, Castle Black Falcon is on the borderlands of civilization, and not incredibly far from Red Mountain itself. So Jasper saw this as the boys at the top trying to get rid of him, putting him first in line for when the orc horde came back. He suspected they were working with the orcs, and they wanted to feed him to the green nemesis. So Jasper went dark, hired some sketchy mages, and holed up in his castle to await the green tide. The mages performed many acts, some pretty questionable, the biggest of which is turning his guard undead in order to have an eternal vigilance. Well, eventually Jasper decided the best course of action was for his family to be put into a magical coma, as the stress of the unknown was finally too much. The mage complied, and then left. With no master uh, meant they could go back to their towers with all the loot they could carry, and soon the staff followed suit, leaving Jasper and his family's bodies in their bed to rot. That brings us to today and floor 3 of the Mega Dungeon. We're starting off a little more interesting as there's some water coming into the room that the stairs are in, with a foul smell coming from the west. There's a troglodyte lair over there, and the smell is to warn the players a bit. You see, my players ended up with a party member death from the troglodytes upstairs, so they'll be pretty freaked out by the recognizable smell. They also called them street sharks. <laughs> in the south of rooms 2 and 3, I have some wugs in there. Wugs are the basic fantasy frogmen, kind of like boggards. Uh, they're here serving the troglodytes, but also to give the players a bit of a break from the meat grinder and the other places in the dungeon. You see the water is coming from a broken fountain in room 5. That fountain is actually fed by a water source from room 6, which is guarded by a bone horror. That's a 4 hit die monster and is a pretty rough fight, uh, but in exchange for getting around it or killing it, there's a magical mace at the bottom of the pool. That mace is Flanagan's Boon, a plus 1 and a plus 3 against undead with sticks to snakes. Well, weapons to snakes, I guess. I was thinking of some cool ways that the party cleric could use it, like chucking it at something and having it turn into a snake mirrored air and biting it. You know, like some kind of like some anime stuff. <laughs> and that sounds awesome to me. It also gives me a uh, another seed to plant, which I can expand upon later to kind of flesh out the world, since this is a named weapon. I might even make it sentient. I haven't uh, decided yet. And I should mention, I'm not using a generator this week. I had a few ideas I wanted in a general layout in mind, so I'm just kind of going off the cuff here with the drawing. Uh, room 7 is a Lizardman lair. These guys are here to give pushback against the troglodytes and the wugs, since they also prefer water. However, they're smaller in number, totaling only 13 to the troglodytes 20. They're also here for something that just won't outright attack the player by nature. They're, they kind of keep to themselves, at least how I run them, and they're mainly going to be curious as to what the hell players are doing down there. So for this, I'm giving them the plus one to their reaction roll for other people's benefit of running this. Before we get to roommate and the fun stuff over to the east, I want to talk about a fun trap I set up. Uh, you see room nine has a traps treasure, however, not trapped like you would think. So it's on the other end of a big ass room, and it's going to be a comically large uh, treasure chest to, to lure the players in. And then the entire floor is like a pit trap, but it's not like a free fall, it's like a slanted. So it's going to slant, the, it's going to like hinge open, and then the players are going to slide down into some spears. Pretty rough, it's a 2d6 for the falling damage and 1d8 for the spears. Yeah, I thought it was like a fun, uh, you know, fun like tropey classic traps. However, that chest will contain uh, 4,000 silver, which comes out to 400 gold, a uh, cursed axe, negative one, and a scroll of protect from undead. Now let's move on to the orcs, since they are the main story of this dungeon. They've taken over a dwarven entranceway, the dwarves being the old inhabitants, uh, if you recall that. So room 8 is going to be an outpost, while the rest of the lair has rooms set up in, uh, sorry, has set up in room 17 through 21. And there's nothing too fancy in there, uh, just some murder holes with uh, three warriors in total, two chieftains, and one king. Uh, the interesting part is the orc shaman that's present here. Uh, shamans can class clerical abilities at cleric level 1d4 plus 1. This guy specifically rolled a 1, so he's casting as a level 2 cleric, so he'll have a cure light wounds for the king if it comes down to a brawl. And back over to the west, in room 11, we're going to have 6 bugbears. Uh, these guys are going to be the scouting party for the orcs, since I'm having orcs and goblinoids work together in uh, this dungeon. And this will kind of help tie together the hobgoblins upstairs and the goblins that are in the castle itself right now. And finally, down in the south, uh, in the hallway right under room 12, that's going to be a 
a hallway that slowly leads to floor four. This is going to give the party a use for the uh, the dwarf in the party. Uh, and it's also just going to be a fun way to, if maybe they don't notice it, then they can accidentally end up a little out of depth here. Uh, and then room 15, we're going to have a shortcut back to the surface with a busted wall leading to a tomb on the estate's grounds. However, 14 is inhabited by two ogres who are pretty nasty, uh, but they're pretty lazy, so they're not going to show up on the wandering monsters table or anything. They're just going to mainly protect their lair. And finally, here is the final map. Uh, I have a, another rock trap in the tunnel connecting 14 and 22, but that really isn't that interesting to talk about, so a quick note's all that needed. Uh, my players are still technically on floor 2, and are only about halfway done, so they might not get there this week, but hey, having floors in the pocket is always good. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please drop me a like, uh, or subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, if you have any ideas for a dungeon floor or an adventure in general, let me know. I might, you know, roll with it, make a, make a video on it, and kind of expand with my own ideas. Uh, but yeah, have a great rest of your day, and see you later.